There is not one fight in a tournament that I, it doesn't cross my mind like, oh, I already lost. Or, oh, this is too late. Here we go. He got two points. This fight is over. I'm gonna tap and just go home, have a lemon pie. You know? Every time is like this. But the thing is, knowing that, knowing how your mind trying to beat you, I, I, do, I try to neutralize those thoughts. I try to think, no, I still have time. No, I'm not giving up, I'm gonna fight. Before my black belt, I never won a gold medal in any big tournament. All I, and I entered the nationals, the world tournaments, all the IBJJF tournaments. I never got any gold. I was, I was already happy I was winning a smaller tournament. When I was a, a purple belt, I won a state tournament. Wow, for me this was like, I was happy for the rest of my life. Because I thought, you know, I'm already state champion, you know, purple belt. I can tell this to my kids, you know. I had no idea I could go much farther than this. I started 12. Until I was 16, I never won a fight. And I didn't fight once per year. I fought every tournament that our team would enter. I would lose, I would get depressed for a week. And then I would feel like, oh, that's not for me, I'll just do it for fun. So it was a love-hate uh, relationship I had with competition. I got my black belt in the year of 2002. I was winning smaller tournaments, I was getting better. And I thought I could have a good performance, in, performance as a black belt. Yeah, but my surprise was that in my first fight, I lost just like I used to lose as a, a younger fight. I lost in the 30 seconds in the armbar. <sighs> so my second year as a black belt, uh, I entered the world again and I won. I became world champion, was my first medal. Uh, ever in a IBJJF tournament as a black belt. <laughs> this is something unique. I have never heard or seen anyone become a world champion black belt in the black belt without winning in the previous belts before. I'm the first one. And I think that's something that gives hope to a lot of people.
the person who is small and don't give up in the long run is going to become maybe the most technical person in the academy. As a, as a small jiu-jitsu player, as a small person, I think the, the number one concern is for you not to get hurt. If you get hurt, nothing is going to work for you, okay? But it's, it's natural that you always want to test yourself with bigger guys and the bigger guys always want to warm up with you. <laughs> so you end up not having too much option. Maybe I had this thing as, when I was younger to let me see how far I can go, let me test myself against this bigger guy. If you know because that's what they say all the time. Oh, Jiu Jitsu, it's for the smaller guys. Or Jiu Jitsu, it's self defense, you have to be ready. Then it's like, man, I don't see many people my size on the street. So if somebody pick, pick a fight with me, I have to be ready against a bigger guy. So let me try with this guy. Let me try. I used to do this a lot, and I think it's important. But nowadays, I avoid this as much as I can. If I'm not preparing to fight bigger guys because I don't fight open weight, why should I train on daily base with bigger guys? If I'm just putting myself in a chance of getting hurt. So the safest thing is to fight people my size, maybe a little bit heavier, maybe 10 kilos heavier. That's, that's something you can handle. But 20 kilos, why? What I'm looking now is for people similar size. The idea of doing the, the light guys only training came exactly to, to make more safe session for us and also to simulate what happens in the tournament. Most people are strong, jacked and big. I would fight with a guy with long legs, heavy, and then I would get in a tournament with a guy with short legs, they're faster and moves much better. So having people on the same weight as you training on daily basis has made the whole group improve so much. Everybody's getting much better results and it's working very well.
for me was really like putting small goals to improve little by little. And of course, in the academy, people were encouraging me, you know, I was pretty good, I was pretty technical in the academy. In the tournament, I sucked. Everybody knew that. The environment of the tournament was always very scary for me. I would get there just hearing the noise, hearing the person calling the competitors would freak me out. I realized I had to do something to, to change this. I didn't have, maybe nowadays I would look for a professional to help, but it was, I was young, you know, it was just a hobby for me. I, I have always loved to read, as you can see. I have read uh, books that are classified as autoajuda, self-help. I would concentrate and try to think as if I was in the academy. I would actually say, this is my academy, repeat things like this. That I, I don't know if it's nonsense, but it, it helped me. So by saying this and by actually believing in my mind that I was in my academy, I would think, this, my opponent, this person is visiting my academy. This is my house, I need to do something. And little things like this, they helped me a lot. If I was starting now and I had the chance to look for a professional, somebody to help, I would not hesitate on doing this. These struggles, the mind trying to make you give up, it's something that happens even today. Even as a black belt, I have moments of better results in tournaments and moments of that I don't recognize myself. You know, I'm more technical today than I was when I, when I got my world title. You know, I'm more technical today than I was yesterday. So how can my performance today be worse than yesterday? Every day in life, your mind is trying to make you give up. It's not that it's trying to make you a loser. Your mind's trying to make you do whatever it's easier. It's easier to sit on the couch and watch TV than it is to get your gi and go sweat in the mat. Because the mind see you're fighting, you're in danger. You can stop this now, just stop. But the thing is, you're there because you want to. You want to challenge yourself. So you have to say, no, I'm not giving up now. I'm gonna go after this, I'm, I'm gonna try harder. You know, I'm gonna go until the last minute. I'm gonna resist a little bit more. So if you put your goals in the academy and make the tournament just a way to test yourself, to get to know yourself better, how you react in a stress situation and all this, this is already great. And when you don't put so much pressure on you, the results are gonna come, either if it's the gold medal or not. But you're gonna be happier as a person. I think that has to be the main goal.